Hello. Pilots are going to receive one of these external 128 gigabyte drives. And these will be bit lockered. And on the back of your package will be the bit locker password. You're going to want to take this Samsung 128 gigabyte drive and you're going to want to put it in a USB port. And now you don't want to put it on an external like this unless it's powered. You want to put this as close to your computer on your computer as possible. So what I'm going to do is actually put it in my <clears throat> docking station right there and you hear it pops up and it's going to say it's bit lockered. That's part one. Okay, once you have put your drive in, you will see it. It will be called USB drive. You want to click it and you want to enter the bit locker. In this case, it's Samsung 128. You want to unlock it. And there you go. You see Samsung. There will be four folders. Web ODM, it will be in the second folder. If you want to look at the DTMV OK to use it, it's in this folder. If you want to look at the license, uh, the link for that, um, it's free, it's open source there. But you want to go on Web ODM and open this folder and you'll see at the bottom here's the application. You want to right click and you want to click open. Lower this. And here's how it initializes. Do not upgrade. Keep it at this version until you get familiar with the program. So don't hop on, don't go upgrading it because there's different things and it could break. I'm no, I know that this version 1.90 build 14 works perfect. So. See this takes a little little while. But you'll get to the desktop of WebODM. This is all coming off that 128 gigabyte flash drive. WebODM is roughly about 11 gigabytes, and there's a mission on there that uh, will have some images you can work with. So this is the there's a mission that's already on there that's already done. This is you can see. How to open it, you click the tasks and you can view the map of this flight. And this is an ortho mosaic of a tire pile in, I believe it's Calhoun County, maybe it's Jackson County, but you can get ortho, you can get your surface model. And I'll just show you quickly how you can adjust your heights or your surface model to get some neater representations of these tire piles, etc. There's uh, plant health. Since this was flown with the Phantom 4, you have to use the correct algorithm, which would be a very, and then you can again adjust the height to show where the vegetation was and where the tire piles are, and things like that. So FYI, from a plant health perspective, there's some funny things you can do. Um, getting back to the ortho mosaic, you can see this is pretty good resolution. You get individual tires, individual treads of tires. That being said, you can play around. You can go to the three-dimensional view which is based on the point cloud. Again, this is all coming off that drive, so you want to keep it as close to your computer as possible. So there's viewing north, there's the tire piles and such. So that's a pretty good image. You can bump up the number of points based on if you want to fill in some of these areas, make them a little smoother. Again, it's going to tax your GPU uh, card you're using. If you don't want the point cloud aspect of it, you could overlay your ortho, ortho mosaic picture on top of this. 
and that'll texture your model on the surface perspective and you'll you'll see that's uh it'll it'll make up for some of the variances so that's all pretty cool uh i'll show you one more thing you can do Let's try this again let me get a there you go there's the two points and then you can go to scene you're on your profile you want to show the 2d profile of that line so there you can see from point a right there there's the tire pile all the way coming across so there's you can get your cross section and heights you can see the x y and z here on the left but what's really neat is that you can move your cross section. You can turn it, you can move it up or down, so you can get exactly kind of what you want. And, uh, typically there's a line there, but you can see you get the, your cross section. So that's, that's pretty cool. Let me kill that. And I'm going to go up and Kill that cross section and also I'm just playing around with volume estimates. So here um, you can get a volume. You have to kind of make your box over the area that you're interested in. I'm gonna try to do this the green. I'm gonna try to do this this side of the pile. There's my other vertex right there. And then you have to go over here and say, make clip volume. And uniform. Okay, so getting back to the 3D model, um, point cloud, again, you can take off the overlay you can increase your point budget and you get uh, your LAS view going back to 2d <clears throat> and then going back to your dashboard here is how to start a new project what I want you to do is add a project and call it Huffman, your initials, what your processor is, whatever you have. Um, I don't have an i8, mine's an i7, start with eighth generation, how much RAM you have, gigabytes of RAM, and if you're running off an SSD, which you should all should be, solid state drive. So you're going to create this project, and we'll call this number two. Create the project, you'll see it there. You wanna go select images, and you'll wanna to go to your drive, which is your Samsung drive. You wanna to go to missions, and this will not be on there, so delete that one. You'll see Huffman 182, 263. You wanna open that, click on that first image, and then hit Control A, which will select all your images and you click open and there's a lot of edits you can do as far as customization but I just want you to click default click there'd be no resizing images then click review and then start processing you'll see it's taking the images off the 128 Samsung Drive external there's only 82, <coughs> excuse me, 82 images to load. So it's going to load up. And it should take approximately an hour or so. It's going to let this load up and show you. All you got to do is load the images, click the default setting and let it go. This is what you should be seeing on your screen. Be 
these were taken off a Phantom 4, but any drone images will work. And then it's going to upload to the processing node. This should all be automatic. One thing you'll want to be interested in is looking at your task manager and your performance of your CPU and your memory and your disk drives. Um, as the images upload to the processing node, which will be your CPU, your chip, you'll see memory is typically about 50%. The CPU, as this starts matching images and such, as this, this gets going, there's not a lot of, there's a little bit of the work on the SSD. Your drive is the removable drive here. For me, it's disk four. So there's some writing going on between the solid state drive, the memory, and then back out to your external. And then you'll see your CPU max out. A couple, about 30 seconds in or so, it'll max out, and then your memory will be maxed to about 50%. So here the CPU will come back down, but it'll, it'll go back up as well as this starts using, basically, there's, you see the CPU goes up to 100%. It's matching about 8,000 points in each image to every one of its neighboring images. Uh, that's one of the settings. So it's very CPU intensive. Um, you can look down here and see from a GPU perspective, it's not that intensive using the Intel graphics card. To get it to use a, a GPU like an NVIDIA, it's a separate setting, um, which we really haven't messed around with yet. But this is very CPU intensive. This will happen for about 20 minutes or so where it's going to be back and forth, the CPU, using half your memory, writing to the SSD, spitting it out to the um, Samsung. This is all happening between your Samsung, your CPU, your memory, uh, your SSD, and the 128 drive. So let that go for about an hour. Of note, if you do want to continue work on other projects, you may. You can open up uh, your office and your calendar and just put this in, let, let it run pretty much in the uh, background or so. Um, it'll always be right here. You can move that off to another screen or whatnot, but uh, so feel free to uh, continue working while you're doing um, some of your other, other stuff. If you kind of want to see what's going on behind the scenes, you can click this little plus and you can see task output. And right now it's off, but you can see on. So you can see that it's matching images near itself with all these kind of different uh, type of matching algorithms and such. And whether it's you get a successful match or an unsuccessful match. So it's doing this with each individual photo. So if you can imagine, if you have four or 500 photos, this could take a while, um, depending on your machine, because it needs the RAM, the CPU, and the fast swap space. But you can just let this go, and we're still working on 10 minutes, 11 minutes in. I'm going to turn this off. Sit and wait while this gets all the way over to completed. Okay, we're just about 30 minutes in. Just want to check the uh, task manager. You can see the CPU use is still 100%. So this thing is really cooking. Uh, memory is just under 50%, 37. It's still writing to the SSD to the hard drive, and then it dumps from the hard drive over to the flash drive, the Samsung, on a periodic basis. So we're still chugging away, 30 minutes in, using 100% of the CPU. Okay, so you see it finished the job in 46 minutes, and this is actually the exact same processor and system um, as the previous one. 
So what you can do again is open and view the map. will come up. Same thing as before. It's the exact same project. So you can do your plant health and your surface models and you can adjust the heights as we did before. Um, the color bands and the, the spectrum and show up in real time. This is fairly good resolution. It takes time for it to catch up because it's pulling it off the drive. If you want to make contours of your site, you may. It's as simple as that. You can choose the interval contour that you want. Um, and you'll want to use the DSM. That's the only thing that's developed. And you can let's see, preview. It still take time to, to do, but um, this will be covered in another uh tutorial but basically so that's how you get your ortho and DSM what you'll want to do going back to the dashboard is you'll want to save your entire project so you'll go here you want to download your assets and you want to download all assets so you can put this anywhere so um, just as an example I'm going to put it under my missions I like to Go in here and under missions and put a new folder. Let's see here, new folder, and I like to call it post processing. And go in here and all, you'll save all your things. All your assets which are listed here, ortho, surface, point cloud, all your parameters, and your, there's a quality report that goes with it. You can review that. Um, then to eliminate, to go back, to edit your, you can delete, and it'll delete that project. I'm going to go back here and edit and delete this first one. I'll click OK. Then to bring your project back, what I did is I restarted my web ODM and you can go import and you'll want to import and it'll ask you, you'll want the zip file that your download assets, all assets that you just saved. So you can upload a file and I put this under missions, under post, there's my all file. So I'll, I'll open that. Fairly extensive, be a couple gigabytes. So let that import. And you'll see it'll come up here. It's importing. I say it's going to take a little while. There it shows it's completed and you can view on the map. This is what we saved under all assets and everything is there. All your surface models, your plant health, as well as the three D model the asset there. So that's how you save your tasks under web ODM. You got to save all, save all your assets and then you can bring them back in the dashboard. You can rename this and rename this as, as you'd like. So that's web ODM and that's the dashboard and that's what you can do from your flash drive.